to the workshop, fellow community. I hope that you are enjoying your evening so far. Uh, and we're really glad that you joined us today. Thank you. I am Michelle Leo, and I will be hosting this Billow Creative Masterclass today. <clears throat> As you've probably heard, Billow Creator Masterclass is a series that focuses on content creation topics, including the technical aspects and soft skills like creativity. I would now like you to welcome Issachar Lee, our speaker for today. <laughs> Issachar represents himself as a husband and father with a focus on all things content. With over five years of experience in social media marketing and video production, working for companies like CBS News, HBO, and creating his own social media marketing agency. Issachar excelled at conveying a message that connects a, a brand to a customer on a deep and grounded level. At the end of the day, his business is people. In today's masterclass, Izzy will cover <clears throat> hardware and software trends in the creatives community, know-how of shooting a video for the efficient editing process, tips to making transitions seamless and the voiceover sounding just right. With the whole team at Billow, we really hope that you find this content useful and your evening well spent. I would now like to hand it over to our speaker and start his presentation. What is going on, guys? I hope everyone is having a great evening tonight. How is everybody doing? I'm absolutely excited to be here with everyone here and the Billow community. All right. So as you guys can already see here, you already know, this is Editing 101. Make your video stand out. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be diving deep and finding ways in which you can make your video stand out when you're making content for brands. So first of all, who is this dude? Like, you, you just got this random guy on here talking to you. You know, you got the headphones on. It, it, it's just a crazy story, right? I appreciate Michelle for giving me that introduction, but really, what, what credentials do I have? My, all in, uh, really short and simple. My name is Isakar Lee, Izzy for short. I'm an Emmy Award-winning digital producer for uh, HBO's Westworld. Um, I've been a social media marketer as well, a content creator, and also I'm a badass dad and husband. That's like my pride and joy, so that's what I mainly focus on. Coming up next with that, I helped kickstart several shows for HBO, CBS, uh, C uh, CBSN, and Vice. And one thing I mainly focused on was a lot of their uh, content that was going on, a short form content to really engage on social media. So that's where a lot of my focus came from. That's really helped us um, kickstart a lot of shows, media brands is from the ground and enhancing their content to elevate into bigger heights that they haven't seen before. Um, and then not only that, I kind of took some of those te techniques that I learned on a you know corporate level and working with them into kind of putting it into my own content as well so I can bring out my own brand. But like I said, I like to keep things short. Don't like to talk to myself about myself too much. So we're just going right, to get right into the business. So, <laughs> so today we are actually going to start off with the hardware. And as Major Payne says, if anybody is a fan of Major Payne, if you've ever seen it, we're going to start with the hard stuff. Getting right into hardware, um, I'm not sure if anyone's actually been familiar with like tier lists or anything of that nature. They got kind of popular in the last couple of years and whatnot. But this is how I kind of conceptualized how I thought about hardware when it came to making content for brands. All right. So first off, we have the things that fit into that S tier. If you're not familiar with S tier, that's better than A. It's like the, the, the super level that you can ever get to. Right. First of all, S tier is your phone. I'm not going to lie. Today, phones have trumped almost any other type of hardware that you could be using. Your camera, your microphone, your storage, like they can do everything. You literally are walking around with a supercomputer in your hand at all times. This is S tier, you're gonna need it. On top of that, next to it, I have hard drives. I cannot tell you um, how many times I've lost so many files, data, videos over the years, just because I either ran out of storage, formatted the wrong hard drive or memory card, and X, Y, Z. Hard drives, memory space, and having enough storage to contain a lot of the video that you're going to be taking in is so clutch, so key, and I, I literally can't live without them, to be honest. From there, we're going to go into the A tier category with computers or laptop. Now, like I said before, um, and we'll get into this a little bit later, your phone really trumps most things that you're going to be doing all around. So if you don't have a computer or a laptop, it's not really, you know, the end of the world. You can definitely get by without it, but it's still something that is super important where you want to get serious and actually start pumping in content on a regular basis. So I had to put it in there. Next to that is lighting. 
The reason why lighting is A tier and S tier is only for one reason. It's because natural light in the sun are way better, <laughs> but they're still important enough to where you have to have them. You, the proper lighting is what makes a scene. So if you don't have that, you're out of luck. Next to that, the tripods. Tripods are really going to be your bread and butter, making sure things are you know set up accurately. You're going to be in a nice place. I remember I had a really cheap tripod one time and I tried to film an outdoor scene. It was windy. The wind knocked it over in a couple seconds. The whole entire scene was shot. It, I'm just telling you guys, having a good tripod is going to be so clutch. From now, we go to the B category with microphones. Now, this kind of steers again back to the whole phone thing. Your phone is really going to be your main bread and butter. Um, and honestly, I'm going to get into ways in which you can actually use your phone as a microphone most times. So it's not, again, the end of the world. It's nice to have, and it's a great addition to what you're going to be doing overall in the uh, grand scheme of things. But you can live without it. You're fine. Camera, same deal. Literally the exact same reasoning I gave for microphones, you can apply it to the camera too. <laughs> it's something that's really great when you're trying to get really serious and have certain types of quality and certain type of focal points, trying to play it around with different lenses. That is going to be so important when you're actually trying to make like super professional content. But when you're not, or you're tr like, you know, just starting out, it, it's just not something that is super crazy or something you got to focus on. From there to C tier, we got headphones and green screens. It's some things that are just, you know, kind of miscellaneous. Nice to have. You don't need it. Green screens, especially because you can just kind of use your environment around you. But I digress. So now that we kind of got through the tier list and kind of give you um, kind of like just an idea of what I kind of use and what you're going to be needing on a you know regular basis, we're going to dive a little deeper into the concept of each one of these things. Right. So for cameras. Right. Off rip, I got to give you guys this quote. In 2021, the best camera is the one that's on you. I'm not going to lie to you. That camera that is in your pocket right now, I said it over and over again. That is going to be your bread and butter. Um, to give a little bit more detail from that, though, the best cameras are smartphones, for example, for video. Definitely going to be, uh, obviously, the iPhone 13. That camera is amazing. It, the quality, the amount of functions you have on it is top notch. But I will say this as well. iPhone 8 and above, just as fine just as fine. You don't have to worry about it. It'll do get the job done. It'll get you to where you want to get to. And you're not missing out on much in terms of that, you know, that distance from iPhone 13. Trust me, that quality is great, but you'd be fine. Uh, from there, you also have the uh, Samsung S21 as well, Google Pixel 5, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. All of them, great quality, great ways to shoot, and super mobile. Onto the actual DSLR side, the best cameras for video here when you want to kind of step up your game a little bit. You got the Canon EOS uh, 90D. That thing is just top notch all the time, always has been. The T series is also great as well. If you guys have ever looked into like the T5i, T6i, I actually have a T5i. I've had it for about five years now. Thing works like a gym. Ain't never went out on me, never clunked on me, never had to buy another camera. Perfectly fine. And then the Nikon D3500, uh, I think 33 or also works as well, but 35 is a great baseline. It's great where you can kind of start from. Another honorable mention I didn't mention here, the Sony uh, Alpha A6000 series. That one's really good as well. They're super mobile, super small, great for vlogging. If you're actually doing like more vlogging content and walking around. So just my take. But as I said, the best camera is the one that's on you. So use it. From there, we're going to dive into computers and laptops now. Now, there's a lot of specs on the screen. Don't worry. Again, like I said, if you don't have a computer or laptop, not in the world, I got you. I, I got you, all right? <laughs> but when it comes to laptop and computers, the um, with the model, the make, everything like that, that doesn't necessarily matter too much. The real thing that matters is the specs. Your specs are your bread and butter. So data is forever growing. It's getting harder to process. So having an out-of-day computer can make all the difference between rendering one-minute videos taking you a couple seconds or eight hours. Trust me, I've been there. You don't want those problems. The specs that you're going to be needing for editing, if you are looking into a computer, all right, just make sure you have these specs right here, all right? The, the memory or the RAM between 8 to 35 gigs. I'm going to say that again, between 8 to 35 gigs, 16 gigabytes is ideal, all right? For the processing, multi-core uh, Intel, you have i5, i7, i9. i5 gets the job done just as well. It's a little older, but it gets the job done just as well, okay? For storage, at least 256 gigabytes, at least. I'm trying to tell you guys, you're going to be using up a lot of gigs fast. That's going to be the thing that's going to be storing all of your files, all those videos that you're creating. Um, right now, actually, ter one terabyte hard drive, which is 1,000 gigabytes, and I know I'm saying a lot of just a lot of different jargon, guys. Don't worry about it, all right? 
1000 gigabytes right this is basically this much here terabyte is that same is that same equivalent those hard drives are actually selling at like places like walmart or amazon for super cheap so you guys can really pick those up pretty easy as well these days so and like i said before data data is growing daily so you're going to need that space and then finally you're going to need a good graphics card um it just kind of depends on editing software that you're going to be using but amd or an nvidia always great the only tough part about graphics cards nowadays due to everything that's going on right now in our world they become a little scarce so it might be hard to find them but Gamers, I got a shout out to all the gamers that are watching. You guys have the leg up because gaming computers can easily transition to editing computers. No problem at all. Same specs are needed. All right. But like I said before, if you don't got a computer, relax. I got you. All right. So next we're going to talk about lighting. All right. So look to the left, look to the right. You see newer, you see uh, Rileno. These are two brands that I like personally. You don't have to get those brands. But when it comes to lighting, it is great to have some really good soft boxes, which is what these two are uh, from uh, Newer and Rileno, as well as having a ring light, only because you like to have that versatility. If you can only get one, get the ring light. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> ring lights are really popular for YouTube content creators and many, many types of creators abroad for a reason. Um, they highlight a lot of the portions around your face and really bring out pretty much all the inflections. Right now, I'm on a live stream camera, so you can't really see everything, but I'm actually using a ring light right now. Uh, it's perfect for me because it really makes me pop a little bit more. You can easily grab soft boxes, ring lights, pretty expensive, like below 50 bucks on Amazon right now, as well as other online outlets. I went ahead and even showed you guys one here right here, a uh, ring light for only 17 bucks. So you can easily get started like that. All right. Now we're going to go into lighting continue. And for my people balling on a budget like your boy used to be back in the day, pro tip, if you need lighting quick, right, but you can't grab the ring lights, you know, you don't have the room yet for the huge soft boxes, get creative with clamp lights. Clamp lights are a lifesaver, I'm trying to tell you. Clamp them up high, pop a bulb in them, use parchment paper or cookie sheet paper right on the front and secure it with a rubber band. Boom, right there, you have a perfect soft light. I'm trying to tell you guys. Um, throughout my entire career at CBS and HBO, I would actually film stand-ups from sometimes uh, for CBS News. I would film them in my room on a green screen with uh, clamp lights in New York. It worked every time. They loved it. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you that stuff works to get you by really, really easy as well. All right. So now we're going to move over to sound, hardware for sound, right? When it comes to sound, like I said before, you honestly can use your phone for a lot of these different things. But... You can never you can never go wrong with having good quality sound. Lavalier mics are great for stand-ups. When I mean stand-ups, this is a stand-up, right? I'm presenting in front of you, I'm talking in front of you. Um, I would have a lav a lavalier mic here, clip right here onto the lapel, and then be able to talk right in front of you guys, right? A boom or condenser mic is great for uh, voiceovers. These are the ones like the Snowball or like the one I have here right on the screen. That's like kind of, you know, the podcasty type mics. These are great for voiceovers, great um, and really great to get you that like uh, kind of filming that that voiceover off camera in a way. So you're not really focused so much on the camera type, on the camera side. But like I said before, as a pro tip, you can always switch your smartphone to the forward facing um, like selfie camera. And when you're recording that, I would honestly just put it right next to your mouth and talk right into it. I've gotten like professional grade sound coming straight from that. I would just make sure that it's still, it's not like moving around. So you're going to feel all, you're going to hear all that ruffling. It's just stagnant it's still, and you're recording directly into it. All right. Now we're just going to talk about the rest. All right. We're going to kind of power through this. For tripod, make sure to grab something that can extend at least a foot taller than you. Trust me, you'll need it later. You would hate to be stuck with a tripod that is too short. Trust me, especially when we start getting into angling. It's not your friend. US, uh, when it comes to hard drive memory, I recommend at least, like I said before, a terabyte for serious creators, but 120 gigs to 500 gigs will do the job. So don't worry about it. And then when it comes to green screen, something easy to maneuver and put away. By the way, remember the figure eight, all right? You'll thank me later. I got these foldable green screens right here, all right? They are a, they are huge for one, and they're a pain to try to put back up. You have to actually step on the bottom of them and then turn to a figure eight. You'll love it. You'll love the fact that I told you that because I had to spend an hour on YouTube trying to figure out how to collapse those things. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to Michelle. I hope they uh, kind of gave a good 
nice introduction. Um, if anyone has any questions, just pop those into the chat. Um, and without further ado, let's jump into all things software. All right, all right. So we're gonna get right back into it. All right, you guys. So now we've talked about the hardware. We talked about the hard stuff, as Major Payne said. Now we're gonna to touch on the soft stuff. So I'm a little softer for you. Know, bring it down a little bit. All right. Software. When it comes to, uh, we're gonna start off on the front of editing, right? In 21, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. You can beat me over the head over it if you guys are like super editing enthusiasts or whatever. In 21, you don't need fancy software to make great edits. You just need something that is fast, dependable, reviewable and can render quickly that's it trust me all right what i'm having here for you right here is just to show you guys a little bit of the different softwares that are great not only for desktop but great for mobile so you can really get in some mobile editing as well for desktop i highly recommend these three davinci resolve final cut and adobe premiere these are literally my bread and butter things i've used over my entire scope of my entire career and they've only gotten better as the years have gone by um Especially Adobe Premiere and then the the kind of like the underdog just popping up out of nowhere, DaVinci Resolve. I actually haven't even used um, Final Cut and Adobe anymore. By the way, Final Cut is exclusive only for Mac users. Um, DaVinci, I've been using like crazy. It's actually free. And the only part you have to pay for is if you want to use um, a bit of the, you know, more complex uh, features and like um, different types of like extra, uh, I don't know, like any like doohickeys that they have thrown in there. Um, as well as any type of like 4K usages as well. Other than that, you don't need it for basic editing. You could literally just go with the free software, add it right to your computer, you're good to go. Now, when we get into mobile, all right, I'm going to say these three as well, InShot, Adobe Premiere Rush, and Luma Fusion. all right? First off, right off the bat, Adobe Premiere Rush is the thing that everybody uses, honestly. <laughs> it's so great. It's super intuitive. The amount of features that it has um, in effects is crazy. So this library is very robust. And it's also free as well. The only part you have to pay for is if you want 4K functionality and some other uh, features as well. Kind of similar to how I mentioned DaVinci Resolve. Aside from that, I use religiously InShot. InShot, oh my God, that thing is a lifesaver. It's super quick. What I tell you guys before, right? All the features that Adobe Premiere has, Adobe Premiere Rush has, are great. But what I tell you guys before, right? I said something that is dependable, easy, reliable, and super pre, uh, uh, easy to preview as well. InShot is all those things. I've literally been rendering videos back to back in a couple seconds, chopping them up real easy. Also in like 30 minutes, if that. We got These guys actually really do the job a lot, especially just for a mobile app. So definitely got to give my flowers to them. All right. Now, when we talk about data transfer, now this is going to be important, especially when you're trying to move data from, you know, your phone uh, over to like some other device or something like that, like myself. Now, if you're just uploading your um, your data directly from your phone into like, let's say you're submitting it to Villa or you're submitting it to a brand or something like that, you won't have too many issues here. But a lot of times, a lot of brands will want you to kind of transfer it to them directly or, you know, Villa might want to need or might want and need that file to themselves that same way. Dropbox and WeTransfer are your bread and butter and something I've been using religiously and I literally bye bye both have mobile app access so you can easily just put them right on your phone as well as your desktop easy transferability with no real issue and both can store and send up to two gigabytes of data for free that's a lot of gigs i ain't gonna hold you for free that's a lot you can definitely put in at least a couple of videos through that type of transfer so you shouldn't have any issues there especially if you get you know you get in with the uh with the deleting, the deleting scheme, <laughs> like I used to do. I used to put up a lot, put up in like, a, like a submitted like a bulk of like five, got too full, just deleted all those five again, deleted all those five again. <laughs> Eventually I had to upgrade because it, it was just literally too much work at that point, but easily can get you through those dark times with no problems whatsoever. And then we also have voiceover. The software for voiceover I use, I've been using forever since I was literally in high school, is Audacity. Audacity has never gotten old to me. I'm telling you. it's it's First of all, it's great for getting quality vocals when you're recording onto it. It has a simple user interface for anyone to use. I'm telling you guys. comes with a huge list of features, as I already mentioned, and it's also uh, open source, so it's free. Anybody can use it. You can download it right to yourself. Um, I think they have a mobile application. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tried it on a mobile, but... Desktop, if you are trying to do that quality voiceover, that's the perfect way to do it. 
<laughs> so how to shoot perfect scenes, right? I'm going to be kind of breaking down into a couple of different sections on how you can really focus in and get that really good scene out of it. So first off, we're going to start with background. So with background, you always want to ensure that your area is clear of any clutter, kind of like behind me right now. You have a plain now a plain background is best for most stand up shoots. Um, but if you have good scenery that complements the presentation, like for IE, like a kitchen for a cooking related video, these are awesome choices. And actually, I'm going to actually pop out right now and show a couple examples of that so you can guys can kind of see it right here with me. All right. Cool. So first up here, I want to show you an example of one of my videos I shot for a brand called Vertoku. So when it comes to chefing up in the kitchen, you know your boy got that on lock. But without the right equipment, damn it, it's a struggle y'all just can't believe. But I just purchased my Bertoku knife set and guys, believe me when I tell you, it's amazing. They're super comfortable and perfectly balanced. And the patterns on the blades give it that nice quality touch. Y'all see it now? Mwah. But don't let the dazzling patterns fool you now. These blades don't mess around. Hey. Look at that, look at that, butter, smooth black butter. These bad boys are incredibly sharp. Perfect for chefing up and giving me that quality cut that I need. Great thing is, they're currently running a 30% off sale and I can't recommend them enough. Don't miss out, get yours today. Yo. So when it comes to chefing up in the kitchen, you know your boy got that Guys, I but, honestly that don't know what I was doing that, towards the end of that video, man. I think I just got bored. But <laughs> as you can see, this is something that I kind of use as a great example of kind of using your environment with you. I'm talking about knives. What immediately comes to mind when, you, when you're talking about knives, right? It's literally your kitchen. It's the thing that you're uh, going to be using the knives in. So I wanted to make sure that I'm using that kitchen, utilizing my area, and also utilizing it as more of like a prop to kind of show it in action and really giving it life to the product, not just talking about it. I'm actually giving life to it. Thankfully, also, we just repainted our kitchen, so all that ugly behind yellow is gone. It's white now. I'm so appreciative. But at the time, it was very useful for what it was. All right, so now we also got to show a preview of another one to kind of show a flat background when you're talking about a product. So I just got the automatic switch wallet from Preserve, and I'm honestly blown away. This is different. I've never seen anything like this before. Make switching between your cards easy and simple. Here's how it works. Throw your cards on inside, and with the switch at the bottom of the wallet, you have instant access to your daily essentials. And if you need cash to make it rain from time to time, just attach it on the back clip. Keeps it nice and snug so you won't lose anything. It has the slimmest sleek design that I absolutely love. It also comes with RFID technology to protect your identity and financial information. When I pull that out in front of friends, they don't know that. And yeah, <laughs> drinks on me. Learn more at preserve.com. Love it. All right, guys. And as you can see with that one as well, uh, what we really want to bring out, like I said before, um, is kind of like giving it to life, right? And since it didn't, for me personally, for that particular product, it didn't really have, you know, that environment I needed, that necessarily needed to go with it. Of course, I could take it to like a bar or something and flash it out or something like that, of course. But when we're just talking about basic product, and like I said, if that environment is not readily available, having a flat background really accentuates the product, brings it up front, and brings the focal point there. So both of those, very important processes and important for really different reasons. All right. So now I'm going to get back into the screen share, back into the presentation for you guys. Okay. And we're going to continue on from there. Hope you guys are learning a lot here. All right, so now we're talking about lighting when it comes to the perfect scene. As you can see from this little diagram that I have right in front of you, we have the three-point lighting. Also, I like to call the golden rule. When you are a subject, right, you're trying to film yourself, you're really trying to get um, you know, the perfect lighting for yourself when you're filming out for a product, you want to make sure you're having at least three different points of lighting coming at you in different directions, one from the left, one from the right, and one from the ring light. Of course, you can cheat this. You definitely can cheat this. If you only have one option available, ring, like I said, ring lights typically are my are typically a little bit my favorite because they are allow for different pops and different layers on your face with the light, as opposed to soft boxes, which are more kind of flat and they can kind of flatten you out. Ring lights kind of bring out more of those like those third dimensions of your face a little bit more. But this is something that is a little bit more of like that rule of thumb, that's something you kind of want to just, you know, play around with and have more so as like your standard. I'd also recommend throwing in there. Um, if you're standing on a plain background 
or if you have like a green screen behind you for any uh, any reason like that to equalize behind you because sometimes with the three point or even with one you'll have a huge shadow and to eliminate that shadow it might even be wise to have a, a standard light underneath you or behind you as well facing the wall to kind of eliminate that you really want to be the only subject in the room not your shadow your shadow doesn't need to be there all right and now we're going to talk about camera positioning. Oh, my goodness gracious. Y'all make sure y'all sit in and buckle in for this one because this is super important. All right. This is super important. Camera positioning helps to tell the story of the presenter in a way that conveys to the audience. All right. I'm going to say that again. Camera positioning helps to tell the story of the presenter in a way that conveys to the audience. All right. So as you can see right here, I got my, my handsome uh, gentleman. I'm going to call him Jeremy right here in front of me. All right. And I got cameras kind of like on both ends of it. What each one of these cameras are doing are showing different aspects and how they be, you know, pointing directly at him from the left side. All right. You got the camera that is literally pointing directly up at him. This type of aspect is shooting from like from the uh, from from. Uh, I literally can't think of the word from bottom to top. Yeah, there you go. From like kind of like underneath the face type view there makes the subject taller and gives them a more dominant figure, makes them look a little bit bigger, more courageous and more assertive. This is why you'll see in certain times, certain times if you even look on Instagram, you can kind of see this, at, uh, see this example on Instagram. You'll see some people taking shots from beneath and you'll kind of, they'll just kind of give off that um, aesthetic of being a little bit more assertive, more confident, more dominant when they're taking pictures from that uh, perspective. This works just as well in video as well. On the right side, when we have the camera facing down on you like this, like coming from, um, coming from like that forehead angle downward, it makes the subject shorter and gives them a softer, innocent, and also easily engaging and cuter feel. Kind of be a little bit more easily uh, easily presentable and easily to receive. So that's something that um, also you can kind of see on Instagram as well. Some people will take a selfie. This is why a lot of people will take selfies down like this way. It kind of, in a way, conveys to the people that are watching that, uh, that selfie, that content, anything like that, that it's a little bit more easily receivable. Those types of uh, shots typically even get the most likes sometimes because they're just so engaging. They're a lot more softer and make you feel at ease when you're trying to, when you're looking and engaging with them. All right. Now, I also like to talk about eyeline. Eyeline is important as well. As you can see, Jeremy's looking directly into your soul right now. He's there right at you, boy. He see everything that you ever did wrong. When you're, <laughs> when you're filming and you're looking directly into the lens of the camera, you are conveying to the audience that's watching, hey, this is engaging. I need to pay attention to this. You're really giving off that um, just kind of just that 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 figure that this is something that is super important for people to watch. For example, if I was talking to you guys like this the whole time, right, you probably... I mean, yes, my words might be important and this presentation be important, but they wouldn't be important as if I was talking directly to you like I am right now and saying that this is the most important presentation you will see in your life. It gives two different tonalities to how you're speaking to someone and how you're uh, visioning it into the camera. So that's just important to note. Oh, wait, also to that as well, you can also show different aspects um, how you position the camera as well. When you are facing directly, as I already mentioned, it makes it important. When you're facing off to the side, it kind of has a little bit less of importance. When you're facing completely off to this direction, you're giving off the feel that there's something else to be paying attention to. And that's something that the audience is conveying. And when the camera is completely behind you, it allows the audience to see what you see, almost in the third view, in the third uh, degree. All right. All important tips because each one of these tells a different story of the thing you're trying to tell. All right. Now we're going to get into cuts. <laughs> all right so i'm not what you would call a uh, one take drake and i know i misspelled that but not that look I'm, I'm not a one take drake i just can't do it i tried i've tried many times to just get through my entire script it don't work no i'm not gonna try it no more i divide my takes into cuts based on how many words and expressions i feel like i personally can fit into a single take but the best tip i can give here is to take pauses in between a presentation all right so i actually have an example right here Got my boy right here, Nod Pod. This is actually one of the products that I've been presenting on well. Now, how I would present this, uh, dang, I don't even remember how I would go off of I guess I'm going to go off the head here. All right, so let's say I'm going to be giving a take, right? All right, so Nod Pod is one of the greatest object. Okay, let me restart that. Nod Pod is one, literally one of the greatest sleep aids that you can ever have. You see how I took that one second beat, that one to two, one to three second beat right after presenting this? Because... The, what, the reason why this is so important is because you want to make sure that you're giving pauses for yourself when you're editing. 
you want to make sure that you're not saying that now pod is one of the greatest now pod is one of the greatest sleep aids that you can ever have and then going right into the next part because that gives you no type of leeway or no type of lead time into cutting into that next uh, portion that you got to re-edit and or you actually start ended up stumbling over your words and really messing yourself up. It's really going to mess up the quality of the edit, the quality of the film. And it's just going to be a headache when you're trying to do things in post. So don't do it. And as I mentioned here, it helps you really stay on track and helps you, helps you with the editing later. So trust me. All right. So also now we are into improving scenes. All right. So, the best thing you can really do with a lot of different brands, a lot of different products, and you can already see it with like trends that you see on TikTok a lot, is finding creative ways to improv scenes to get the best out of them. That's super key. All right. It's super key. If you want to create a running scene, all right, try a close up shot with the camera jittering up and down like this really quickly. You don't have to run very far in order to get that running scene, if you know what I mean. You need some sweat to roll for your workout. I'm pretty sure you guys have already seen this cliche in a lot of different videos and movies. Throw, try throwing some water on your face to get those beads rolling. You want to cry, throw some Sprite around your eyes. It really gives you that fizzy look. There's so many different things that you can do in order to create that aesthetic. And I actually have an example right here that I'm going to be showing you guys right now. All right. And we're going to play. Yo, I am so sick of crappy earbuds. Oh, wait with you. They never work the way I need them to. Sound is terrible. And when I'm on my morning runs, <laughs> It's a hassle to keep them in like you wouldn't believe. That's why I grabbed up the AI Power earbuds. These are a game changer, I'm telling y'all. They are the world's first on-wrist charging earbuds. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Literally, when I'm out like today on a run, just pop these bad boys in and go. And when I'm ready to take them out, just throw them on the wrist charger quick and easy. I don't have to worry about losing the buds or having a charging case on me either. I'm telling y'all, this is for real what every runner needs. Check them out yourself, though. And use code TikTok15 at checkout to get them deals. Definitely a vibe. All right, guys. All right. So just to let you guys know, I probably didn't take more than 10 steps fi filming that thing. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest. Now, I'm not trying to endorse anybody being lazy. I'm not trying to endorse that. Trust me. If you're going if you're gonna have a running shot, just run. Just go ahead. Turn them out, big dog. Turn them out. But look, when it came to a lot of those shots and a lot of those scenes, as you saw when I said taking a run, I literally was taking a couple steps at a time and just turning the camera up and down really fast to create that aesthetic of a running simulation. Same thing with the falling over effect was barely was barely making those movements and kind of moving things very quickly in order to create that feel that look like, oh, crap, he's, he's falling over. It's over. All right. And with those different elements there you kind of create help to create a story of someone that is literally walking uh literally on a run they're super active and they need something to help them with their workout and this is something that i have wanted to convey there so be able to use your environment and use different things in which you can help convey that story but also kind of get a little creative with how you're using your camera in order to create those aesthetics so that you don't have to go out your way and like i said if you have to cry in a scene you actually got to go watch a sad movie or get some bad news in order to cry don't do that don't do that. Throw some water in your face. Just throw some water. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys are learning a lot here. And I hope that is really getting to you guys. I hope that's a uh, key part because that's something that was super key for me. All right. So now we're going to get back into it. Okay. And now we're going to talk about voiceover. All right. So when doing voiceover sections for your video, make the focus be on the item you're showcasing. All right. I'm going to bring out my trusty knob pod one more time. All right. When I, if I was to do a voiceover over this, I wouldn't be talking like I am right now. And I wouldn't be, you know, just kind of bringing more of the attention to myself rather than that. Instead, I would do this. Those different types of like moments actually bring out a lot more of the excitement that you have for a particular product or for whatever thing you're talking about. It doesn't even necessarily even have to be a product. It could be even a digital product or anything of that nature. But when you're really showcasing it off and really kind of just putting it at the focal point, you're allowing a lot of the audience to really engage with it itself. All right. And as I mentioned before, as I was uh, just showing here a second ago, showing it from all different angles, you know, not just showing it from the front, you know what I'm saying, or just like a basic throwing up there, show it from all different angles, let everybody see about it, you know what I'm saying, you're trying to show it off, do a quick unboxing of it, throw it off pretty, pretty seamlessly, pretty smoothly, and then also hold it in place for each angle for about uh, at least like three seconds. I said five, but at least three. This is going to help you with editing. 
because it's going to really help you with those easy and seamless transitions that you're going to need to cut later on. Also, as I mentioned, also mentioned here, uh, perform with the item as well. If you have a bike, ride it. If you have a knife, cut with it, etc. I know these things sound pretty basic, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do them. Um, really getting active with the product really shows off a lot more of it than people think. But basic unboxing and talking is starting to become the old way of doing things. A lot, a lot of the newer way, especially with the way of the TikTok, is starting to become a lot more interactive. People want to see you being you with that product. Yeah, but this way you get a thorough bit of B-roll to work with uh, when you're recording your vocals underneath. So you will never run out. Trust me, you'll thank me later. <laughs> all right, so right into it, we're going to talk about the editing tips and tricks. All right, so this I'm just going to basically walk you through what I would like to do and how I kind of approach editing. Um, each editor, just wait, well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to kind of rewind that move. Each editor edits to their own style, all right? No two editors are the same. Everyone has their own style and that's what makes them all unique, all right? I can only tell you what I do and what works for me, but I really charge you and challenge you guys to really just kind of go out there and have fun with it. Try different things that work for you and try different things that really bring out your personality. When you do that, right, brands are going to really key in onto your personal way of editing. It's going to make you stand out a lot more than trying to emulate others or trying to do something else. Finding that own roadmap, finding your own pathway really does help in the long run. Just wanted to say that. But I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning. I like to take a strip, right? A strip is basically just, you know, a video strip, a raw uh, raw video strip, something I just filmed. Oh, I like to take that strip and work on it from the end to the beginning. I'm going to say that again. I like to take my strips and I work on them from the end to the beginning. You heard that right. It helps me personally edit faster because for one, I know that my best takes are going to be towards the end of each grouping. So I cut down on time skimming through. Like, oh, wait, did I say that right? Oh, dang, dang. Okay, well, got to cut that off. Okay. Oh, did I say it right? Oh, he kind of said it right. Oh, no. Nah, oh, did I say it right? Yep, I said that right. That was the last take. I should have just went to that in the beginning. <laughs> now, sometimes I will have better middle or first takes, and I'll just keep mental notes of that. Um, or I can just write it down on a sticky note like, hey, you did a really good take on this shot. Make sure to keep that. But a lot of times I like to work from the end to the beginning because it gets me through a clip a lot faster. From there, I like to cut out any dead spots, places where there are no vocals, unless I know for a fact I shot a, vo a voiceover segment, i.e. the nod pod example. If I know for a fact I didn't shoot one of these, I probably should just cut all of the uh, dead noise out. Then I place them together tightly so that when I'm finished with my sentence in each shot, it quickly cuts to the next with not much dead space in between. And I'm going to show you an example of what I mean by all of this, all right? Okay, and let me go ahead and pull up editing example here all right guys so i'm going to show you in this video now something super quick and this is something i was actually just working for drove and look authentic at the same time but so many places online have trash designs and bad shipping times till on shorts and as you guys can see right there, those portions of dead space in between really do like kind of kill that video. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get rid of those. So I would literally just turn on the blade function. By the way, just for anybody that's uh, for everybody that's watching, I'm actually using DaVinci Resolve. I told y'all I love it. I love it. I love it. But you can easily do this on your mobile and InShot. I also die hard love it as well. And Adobe Premiere Rush. So try those as well. Turning on that blade there chopping it through there, and then just deleting out that function. What's great about DaVinci, it actually condenses it for you, so I didn't have to press any extra buttons. I have trash designs and bad shipping times. Till I found Timeless Era, Skyline, and Lounge Shorts. Loving the Gucci-inspired waistband. These shorts give out super love. And as you guys can see right there, by taking out those dead spaces and really condensing them really tight, by it helped me go from one sentence to the next pretty seamlessly and by also if you also see like with the, when i talked about the gucci inspired race uh, waistband there it helped kind of enhance that like that fun factor or that humor factor as well which is something i love to convey in my particular type of edits i love to throw in humor i love to throw in that fun and engagingness as well so 
by condensing that, I helped to really kind of work on that timing, to, that snap timing to get from one section into that joke, into the next part of the section really easy and really seamlessly. Okay. Now from that portion there, all right, so placing them tightly together, we got them together, we got them all, you know, condensed. After I do a thorough cut and trim, right, I do a thorough cut and, uh, cut and trim job, right? Then I do, if I do, uh, then I have to do any voiceover work that's needed. I do that last. I do that very dead last. And there's a reason for this madness, all right? I'll record my voiceover, which was written as a part of my script. So it was already a part of the script. I had just recorded it. What I did is I cut that part out and I just put it right over to the side, condensed all the other parts where I was actually doing a stand up on, on screen. And what I would do is sometimes I would, um, sometimes I would, I would actually do that voiceover portion. Um, like the audio portion of that voiceover on Audacity, or I would do it on my phone when I didn't feel like pulling up that platform. I told you guys before, if you have your phone handy to you, you can literally just have it, um, have the camera. I'm actually going to show what I mean right right now. I should like this to make it really simple, right? So have the camera on selfie mode, right? You're literally having the camera on selfie mode. And what you do is you're literally going to press record and talk right into it. That's simple. That's literally what I mean, guys. So by doing that, you're having the microphone face you and it's bringing in directly to you. But if you want to go the more professional route, having in that extra quality, making sure that you have your pop filters available, Audacity is the best the best thing. So after I've filmed out, I've already filmed out everything. I've already cut up everything, right? I'm now doing that voiceover work. I'm going through my script, reading on Audacity. I'm recording that. I rendered that from Audacity, then add it into my editing timeline. Then from there, I'll start cut. I'll start cutting and trimming that up like I did the rest of the video just a second ago. So now I have a perfectly cut and trim audio read. This is exactly what I need, right? This is going to tell me exactly how much time of video I need overlaying it. You remember before I had the whole knob pod thing, right? I had this, I was showing it from the different angles. The reason why is I wanted to get a good lengthy amount of B-roll available to have to start chopping up. Now that I actually have a ruler limit of how much I need from that, I can go back to that that video of that B-roll capture and I can start chopping those bits up and place them right on top of that voiceover. This helps me out a ton. It chops out so much of the extra time I would need trying to line things up properly. No, I work on the audio first, then I go back and bring the video on top. That makes it so much easier, a lot more seamless, and you have no more headache. Trust me, it works. Charm, I've been doing it for years. Works the charm like no other. All right. And now for the next part of that, I'd also like to talk about the best way to make your voice sound natural. Best way, guys, use the same tonality and the same inflections you would have if you were acting it out in front of the camera. If I was acting this out in front of the camera, I'm talking about it and singing his praises. I'm going to be acting this out in front of the camera, talking about it and singing his praises. It's literally going to be the exact same inflections, the exact same tonality. I'm not going to tone down to act like I'm just kind of giving a quick recording over something. No, I'm going to keep in the same energy. Keep it up. Make it sound supernatural. All right. And once you've done all that, just render it down and you're good. Excellent. Um, I saw another great question. How do you utilize holding your phone versus a tripod uh, when filming and trying to com uh, convey like um, emotion or an action? Oh, that's actually a really good question. All right. So, and I kind of gave this example a little bit with the wear pods example. Um, when you guys saw me, you know, I was outside, I had the, uh, the pods in my arm and everything like that. The reason I actually could have shot that as a, as a stand up with a tripod right in front of me, but I chose to shoot it more of like a selfie aspect like this. The reason why I wanted it to be, to feel more of like a personalized speaking to the individual I was talking to, to the audience, to the brand that was going to be seeing this video. This is something that, um, you know, our health, our fitness, things of that nature are a lot more personalized and people want to make sure they can trust you when you're going into a brand. Another thing that I can note is the beauty industry as well. People really want to make sure that they can trust who's talking about when they're talking about a new skincare product, new something like that. So what I'll try to do is actually have this phone. I actually choose the phone aspect in, instead, aim it up a little bit higher, like I said create more of that friendly, engaging atmosphere, like I was telling you with the angles, and talk to it like this in this type of way. 
because it helps to really bring out that emotion of something that you can trust me. You can, and I'm not trying to deceive people, guys. This is a great product, <laughs> but <laughs> but you can trust me. I'm a lot more friendly and I'm a lot more engaging. So this is the way that that will kind of speak. Now, if you're having it set up on a tripod just right in front of you, right, you can still kind of explain. You can still create that, but it's a little more difficult because it's it's just not as much as a raw. Um, of, of a raw take. I'd say like when you're holding up that phone, it creates more of like an amateur-esque, you know, Instagram, easily engaged. Like they just made this right now. So they had to tell me something right now, as opposed to something that is more formulaic, something that you obviously could see had a little bit more edits in it and was presented to you that way. Excellent. Um, I have and someone word. said uh, passport in the, ch in the chat. Yes, passport. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Passport. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Passport. Excellent. <laughs> I love this group. They are so, uh, they're communicating amazingly. I love it. Um, I have another great question. How do you fit everything in that they want you to say in a 15 second video? Um, she says, I've sped it up some videos as long as it doesn't look unnatural. Is there a better way to do this? I'm only laughing because I've had so many issues with this, right? I've had Brian <laughs> tell me, like, they sent me like this long of a list things like, yeah, we want you to say this, this, this. I'm like, this is 15 seconds. <laughs> so some, yes, you will see me speak at literal like gibberish speed sometimes, right? Because I can talk really fast if I really want to, you know, like if I'm, if I'm really giving my effort into it. But even with that, it gets super difficult at times. So the best way I can kind of do it is really find the really key and important aspects, right? Really find really key and important aspects that really tell the story of that product. I'll say it again. Find really key and important aspects that tell the story of that product. You can even kind of, with that, right, with find those key and important aspects, really try to sell those, right? You're really going to be bringing it home and really trying to sell those aspects in particular. At the end of the day, our bottom line when we're working on with our brands, they want you to bring out the best out there product. Sometimes, yes, there are some super, super heavy requirements. Say, yeah, I need you to say this. We're having a sale. You got to mention that part. But if there's other parts where they're just talking about the feature, they really want to just kind of get that out to the audience. It is up to you as a creator to really find those important parts and then to bring those to life. Once you do that, you can actually kind of cut back a little bit on the, on the extra fluff sometimes. I've actually had multiple brands reach out to me and be like, whoa, we didn't even put that in the brief, but do that. Just, just do that. Yep. Give that, get that to us. Yep. We'll take that. So <laughs> sometimes they'll even bypass some of those things as well if it is such a good video and it's conveying what they want and their message. So hope that answers your question. <laughs> yes. Okay. We have another great question. Uh, what is the vo a voice over software that you were recommending? The voiceover software I recommended, like I mentioned, I think in the uh, in the presentation was Audacity. Audacity, mm -hmm. and I think somebody also also mentioned in the uh, chat as well. It's the OG. It is literally the bread and butter. A lot of podcasters use it, a lot of content creators to this day. For years, Audacity is everyone's favorite. Um, super reliable, super fast, super rendable, and you can actually render it in WAV files, MP3. It's a great source for you, so I would definitely go with Audacity. Like I said before, if you cannot use Audacity, however, just using your phone and using voice record or using the camera on your phone works just as fine when you're in a pinch. All right. But as far as something that's a professional and up to standard, I would highly recommend Audacity. Wonderful. And it's free. Who don't like free? Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have another question. Uh, how do you reduce background noise in InShot? How do you reduce background noise in InShot? Ooh, okay. So or just in I, general, just in general, um, okay. this person was using InShot and they tried to, mm -hmm. you know, edit it out. So in general, I would say. One thing you're really going to have to do is just make sure, uh, and that kind of goes back to my um, tip on environment. Make sure your environment is really noise compressed. Um, any type of outside noise, any type of thing that's going to be really affecting you is going to be minimized. And if you're having a trouble with background noise, this is where I'd highly recommend you might want to invest into getting a microphone, especially a lavalier mic, so that your only your your real your vocal inflections are really going into the mic and not so much the outside world that's affecting it. That's something I would highly recommend. Um, because you really want to like, yeah, someone also mentioned voice memo. You really want to try to cut down as much on that initially in the first place, because I'm not going to lie. A lot of editing softwares do have uh, noise reducers or, you know, neutralizers, but 
even when I've, I've kind of even played around with DaVinci Resolve, you know, and even their their neutralizer is fine, but it would have been better for me just to make sure I had good mic quality to begin with. So I want to kind of step back from advising you on how to, you know, back in post, try to edit that out, as opposed to just make sure on the front end that you're really filming great quality to begin with. Okay. All right, so I think this is going to be our last question for the night. Um, so any suggestions for shooting a one-to-one -one or a, a four to five? Um, she says, I always have the worst time getting the clips properly cropped. Mm -hmm. All right, pro tip for one-to-ones, right? One to ones, it's, I hate one to ones. Because anyway, <laughs> the same thing, they always get, they always get clipped. I'm being real with y'all. All right, when you're filming and you're using your camera, right? You're using your your phone, right? Film like this. Film like this. Step back. Film just like this, and have you center right in the middle. And it's gonna look a little awkward because your 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 camera's gonna be on this side. It's not gonna be in the middle. So don't look straight. Look here, but make sure you're standing here. Film like this, and when you're cutting it, 16 by 9 is super easy to cut and condense. You can easily square that up right there. That I, It took me forever to figure that out, and that has really helped me immensely. Um, and when you're talking about for 4x5, I would suggest the normal way that you would stand in the way for a, a, nine, a nine, to, 9 to 16, I would make sure you step one step back. If you normally are right here in this position for a 9 to 16, Step one, step back. By doing that, you really help when you're cutting back. You're cutting that. Uh, you're cutting cutting that shape into view. It's going to cut out all the extra around you and not cut out you. So that's something that's just a little bit of a pro tip for the uh, again for the one by one film like this and look directly into your camera side and then just cut it, just square it up. And then for four by five film like this, take one step back. That's the best way to get those proper cuts. Fantastic. Well, I want to say a massive thank you to you, Issachar. This has been so amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your amazing vibe with us today. It was so fun. You're so, you're, you're, you're hilarious. <laughs> um, and I want everyone uh, to stay tuned for more Billow Creator Masterclasses coming really soon.